All right, welcome everyone to the August 4th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee meeting. Uh, as you are all aware, two things that we must abide by. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently being displayed on the screen uh, at the top. And then uh, the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Um, as far as announcements go, we have the standard announcement of the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you have something that you want to go out to the hundreds of Hyperledger developers, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. Um, another announcement I'd like to make um, for the TSC members I did in the uh, Discord channel, uh, put a note about the Hyperledger, not the Hyperledger, I guess the Hyperledger proposal um, for Solang um, that has been written uh, one to get kind of a general feel for what people think on that proposal, as the maintainers would like to, you know, have a fairly decent uh, chance of getting accepted <laughs> without, um, you know, knowing that they're going to get rejected, I guess, is the, the key here, right? Um, so just let, let me know in the chat um, your general feel for that um, so that I can get back to Sean and uh, we can hopefully have that discussion here coming up soon. Uh, any other announcements that anybody would like to make? All right, seeing no hands and nobody coming off mute, that means there's no other announcements. Uh, the Hyperledger Sawtooth report came in last week. Um, I did see a number of people have been able to review that since uh, it came in. I did not see any comments coming in, but does anybody have any comments on the Hyperledger Sawtooth report that they would like to bring up here in the TSC call? All right, still seeing no hands. Are we coming off mute? I will take that as no. Uh, we have the Aries and the Indy report uh, that is coming due today. Um, I have seen uh, messages go out on Discord about that, so I'm expecting that to uh, those to come in here shortly. Uh, the Aroha one is due next Thursday, uh, so we will hopefully see that one coming in as well. Um, as far as discussion items for today, the only thing that I had on the list was uh, the task force um, that Bobby and Benjamin have been driving. Um, but is there any other discussion items that we should have before we get to that task force discussion? All right, uh, seeing also no hands, nobody coming off mute, I will take that as a no, and I will hand this off to um, Bobby and Benjamin to walk us through kind of what they've been working on with the documentation task force. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, I am going to introduce Benjamin, um, who's going to give the presentation. Um, during one of the technical steering committee calls about four or five months ago, there was discussion about um, badging and documentation in the community and what it looks like. And there was really never any research done on it. Um, so the learning materials working group took that as a challenge. And we have prepared a presentation for you today, and I'm going to turn it over to Benjamin, who I feel is one of the brilliant rising stars in the Hyperledger community. Um, so it's all yours, Benjamin. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. No pressure. Um, uh, Rye, am I able to share my screen? You should be able to. Okay. Thank you, sir. I will go ahead and do that. And please let me know if it's all visible and so forth. That's uh, good. Great. Great. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so today I wanted to share, as Bobby was saying, the weeks and months that we've been working on this task force, um, some of the gaps and opportunities that we found within the documentation. And we wanted to emphasize that ours is a fact finding mission and that our conclusions and recommendations we wanted to spur discussion amongst the hyperledger community uh, for the betterment of documentation towards greater adoption and ease of use and learnability. So our eight guiding principles is that standardization uh, makes adoption faster. Each project could use a similar hosting platform. Uh, currently, they all do not. Any documentation platform platform should use a common markdown theme, a language uh, that gives you a little bit of style. 
a theme and an interface. And we'll see a bit more on that later. Um, we also have done a survey and one of the questions is regarding a design aesthetic. We noticed some of the pages have a simpler, more minimalist aesthetic, whereas some have more of a complex, uh, deeper dive encyclopedic um, aesthetic to them. So we found that a simpler design aesthetic may be uh, more beneficial, but again, we'll get back into that later. And we also found that some, some pages reflected a newer a Web3 or blockchain open source aesthetic, and that could be something for the future. Um, we also recognize that there is an implicit uniqueness between each Hyperledger project, and we wanted to uh, resolve that with the fact that most companies or organizations have a standard theme for their product pages. So one to the next uh, looks quite similar. Uh, we believe that these standards should be reflected in a consistent manner using a badging or checkmark system, and that that system and our guidelines should allow for community involvement uh, to avoid a, a top-down approach, but instead reflect a collaborative uh, open source nature. So our specific recommendations, we found that most Hyperledger products indeed used read the docs for the documentation hosting. And so our first guideline or recommendation is uh, informed by that, um, that those who don't use the docs could benefit greatly by moving to that platform. Um, that even amongst those who use read the docs, that standardization could exist between content and context. Um, that inconsistencies in style, graphics, and other content could be minimized in order to maximize standardization, and that current and future projects could utilize a standard uh, template or theme using an, an agreed upon documentation pattern. So what exactly is that pattern? We found that most projects use read the docs. Read the docs is populated um, by files on GitHub, which is also the source of truth for all code, and then a Hyperledger wiki page, which would host uh, the badging. Uh, we found that there were some differences in graphics and glossary sections and could be improved in terms of better lookup and user experience. And we noticed that uh, some projects do use the Discord, but the documentation by itself as a standalone read the docs was not necessarily reflective of the community. If the community existing for technical and non-technical questions on Discord, uh, those read the docs pages could be used uh, through pinning on, uh, on Discord. And finally, our, our last recommendation is that we utilize a survey to reflect the voice of the Hyperledger community, the various unique projects um, that within them have disparate themes, styles, and layouts um, to find some harmonization between them. So our task force has got uh, four main sections to it. The first two are completed, determining the status of all the projects, tools, and libraries. And that was done in a grid analysis, and we'll get into that in a minute. And then we also used uh, an examination of the current processes, so that documentation pattern I talked about, read the docs, GitHub, and the wiki pages. And these two are the ones that we're going to go over today quickly. Um, the community itself, we wanted some involvement in terms of the survey and best practices uh, to be agreed upon. And so this is a matter of having community involvement and uh, a voice being heard. And then that would necessarily inform the integration of those best practices into a badging system. Um, our del work deliverables and work products included that analysis. So a grid analysis uh, showing what platforms are currently in use. So the key takeaways for that, we can <laughs> we can get into this. this is quite a big grid, a lot of detail here. I'm not going to, uh, in the interest of time, go through it all, but I will say the documentation is mostly read the docs. So if we scroll down the screen here, we've got mostly read the docs with a few stragglers on Google Docs, some on just the docs, and a couple on docs.rs. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, most of them are on read the docs, and that is our general guideline for documentation hosting platforms. Uh, the survey itself, I will perhaps drop that uh, in the chat if I can, and we'd love to have some feedback on documentation standards. I just our, dropped the survey in the Discord channel. Oh, basically, <laughs> thank you, Bobby. Um, our, our report itself, uh, you know, it's it's uh, existing on our Hyperledger page. Please, you know, take a look at it, and we'd love any uh, suggestions or uh, our updates to it. Our recommendations, like we said, we wanted to that to exist in two parts. So our guidelines and recommendations, as well as the community voice uh, through discussion on Discord and the survey results. Finally, that would uh, end up in a badging process, utilizing that template. And uh, our perspective was that that could be integrated into an already existing Hyperledger badging system. Uh, why reinvent the wheel when it's, it's already there? Documentation could be a part of that. So from incubation to graduation, we could include documentation in that system. Um, we saw that Read the Docs was uh, mostly used. Um, those products who do use Read the Docs are using Sphinx, restructured text, RST files, or Markdown or Theme Enhancer like MKDocs uh, with Insider Features. 
those projects who are using non-traditional, we do recommend that we standardize, harmonize it, those documentation projects um, since most 80-90% of those projects are already using read the docs. We talked about a documentation pattern. So essentially the trio is read the docs, GitHub, and the wiki page. The wiki page is where that badging system would live and be integrated into. GitHub is a source of code, uh, code truth, but also more importantly for our purposes, where the files live for read the docs. And we'll have an example of that. Um, now we noticed on the grid that most of these projects are, are using read the docs, but what I wanted to highlight for you today in two case studies is that even um, projects that are using read the docs, there are still some differences and uh, stark differences at that. So with this example, I'd like to just um, call into uh, to mind a hyperledger fabric versus Besu. Um, on the right hand side, we have Besu, which is adopting a more minimalist approach. Um, our task force enjoyed the fact that it gave uh, only about four options and that if you go into Besu, there is a technical deep dive. You can get uh, quite deep into all of these. So you have that encyclopedia uh, wealth of knowledge, but it, it does not overwhelm the user right away. Fabric, on the other hand, is probably the gold standard for a lot of documentation. Um, however, it does use a different look and feel. It's got a logo in a different place, social media links, as well as a more encyclopedic knowledge. And this is probably one of the starting points. We've got quite a bit of information here. Um, but we did find in our survey that the survey uh, respondents, uh, who we hope to get more of those, enjoyed a more minimalist style. Um, and we do get into more detail there. Um, looking at both content and context. So even pages that are similar in their layout and style, we did notice uh, disparate um, uh, elements in terms of content. And we felt that that content was reflective of different contexts. And by that, I mean, um, and let's take a look to, to exemplify that, Fabric versus Sawtooth. Fabric was necessarily uh, a classic, uh, not a newcomer, but uh, the gold standard in terms of documentation. And it brings you into a deep dive, not only into the product itself, but into blockchain, into Ethereum, into Bitcoin, and into DLT, uh, AML, and KYC regulatory frameworks. So you get more of a holistic introduction as to uh, the blockchain and Web3 community. So let's compare that with what Sawtooth does for its introduction, which is getting right into the product itself. How do I spin up an instance? How do I get a node working uh, very fast? And it, it jumps into Sawtooth as uh, uh, modularity and how I can design my application. So even between the two of them, um, we see stark differences in terms of the context uh, reflective of uh, the context. Um, our task force also wanted to look at what is the rest of the blockchain community doing and can we compare that? And we felt as though some of the blockchain uh, communities, uh, one of our members recommended Cosmos. Um, <clears throat> we felt that it had de a definitely a different look and feel. There were some similarities and these green lines are noted are uh, indicating some similarities between um, Hyperledger Fabric on the right hand side and Cosmos on the left hand side. And so there is a lot of similarity between the two of them. We did notice that Cosmos had these cards or buttons which reflected the idea that someone going to the page could have a very quick um, decision-making process as to whether they wanted this first one, which indicates a deep dive into more technical tutorials. And on the second one, um, getting into SDK into uh, spinning up an instance uh, on the right-hand side. So we thought we'd try and jump into a read the docs and we did a little POC just to kind of get an idea of how exactly RST works uh, with README, and can we use some of these more Web3 or, or um, newer aesthetic decisions? So on the right-hand side, you have a developer quick start button. On the left-hand side, you have an introduction to Hyperledger project key terms and concepts. And these each of these are just links that essentially, um, I, I was um, commenting to, to Rai just a moment ago about how some of the documentation pages are necess necessarily uh, more 1.0 uh, features and some of these uh, MK um, insider features could bring us into more of a Web 2, 2.0 framework. Um, so read the docs itself is where most projects live. We would like it to be where all projects live. Um, the discussion then becomes around themes and Sphinx is the platform where, we, where these read the docs themes are generated from. Restructured syntax is where you see a lot of this, um, uh, the markdown language used to say create buttons and so forth. And our, our POC kind of uh, was informed by that. And hopefully we'll work a little bit more on that with uh, the MK Docs Insider Features. Here's just a glimpse of what can happen with uh, a Sphinx or Sphinx themes. Uh, we notice that there is a disparate theme being used for each of the Hyperledger Public pages. 
um, you know, maybe picking a theme or picking a, a style of theme could allow for more consistency between them. And this is just going into our proof of concept. Um, we do have the ability to use custom CSS and uh, custom JavaScript. And uh, Rai was updating me about the MK Insider features, which are also very nice to be able to push forward the functionality of, of any Hyperledger project documentation page. Uh, thanks to Rai for that. Um, I'll just going to finish off and talk about some of the best practices in our questionnaire. We did have a, a great quote from a Hyperledger community member, and I'll just share that with you today. Um, she says she understands that the Hyperledger project is separate from our, our company and that it may require complete isolation of content. Uh, the style, the markdown guidelines may need to diverge from their company's corporate documentation standards in the future, and their team is happy to continue the discussion uh, here at the next community call. What I wanted to emphasize with that is that there is kind of a disparate um, set of maintainers, project developers um, that we wanted to hear their voices from. So that leads us into our documentation survey. Uh, given that uniqueness for each page, we wanted to have a questionnaire, a survey that, that gives us those types of um, results. So in order of, uh, to, to share these types of uh, uh, documentation standards, We've got some responses. We would love to have more, <laughs> so please jump onto the uh, the Discord page. Um, in, in terms of the survey responses thus far, we've gotten some who are more interested in a minimalistic style. I, I'm not sure why this is not uh, not jumping up. Uh, let me just run you through some of the responses that we've got. Um, most of them said they did not mind a standard page. And most of them said that they were uh, more interested in the functionality of being able to, to spin up an instance of their Hyperledger project, as opposed to having sort of um, uh, fancy graphics and aesthetics. That being said, there was a push towards uh, graphs, charts, and being able to include functionality in the documentation pages. Um, so, and if you'd like to take a look at that, you can definitely go into those results shelf. The questionnaire URL is also part of um, the page that we have. So, Please, if you feel uh, that you'd like to uh, <laughs> have a voice in this, uh, we've, we've got just a, a few questions there. And a few minutes of your time would, would help us to determine our next steps going forward. And then our recommendations finally in, in terms of uh, a badging system. Um, that's all for me. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. And thank you to Bobby for allowing me to, uh, to share our results. Thank you, Benjamin. That was a great job. And now I'm gonna turn it over for questions and Back to Tracy then. Hey, um, thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Ben. That was that was um, really good insights into what has happened. I mean, what is available across different projects. And um, thanks for that detailed um, analysis and all the information that you have collected and recommendations that have been come up that have been made over there. Right. So. Um, quick questions in terms of um, some of the projects which you mentioned, like which are not currently using Markdown or RST format. How do we, um, so, so in terms of efforts involved for those maintainers and, and if let's say a recommendation goes in and saying that, hey, all the projects are to be moved, um, what's the kind of effort involved from them, for, for them, for those projects? Sure, yeah. To be honest with you, I can't speak to the actual effort because each project would have a different amount of documentation. However, however, let, let me say this. I did find, uh, and, and maybe Bobby found this as well, that those projects that were not using uh, Read the Docs, so RST, uh, Markdown files, and so forth, also had a more minimal amount of documentation. So while I can't speak to the actual terms of, uh, uh, of effort that it would take in terms of um, uh, porting that documentation information from one platform to the next. I will say that those uh, projects that were using, say, the RST files, excuse me, the docs.rs, for example. So I think Transact and Ursa may be also uh, Firefly. Some of the documentation there was a bit limited to begin with. So I don't think that it would take too much effort to port that over to uh, to read the docs. Um, however, this will be project to project. So some projects will have more documentation. We also noticed that some projects were in the more infancy or incubation stages of their project. And therefore their documentation may not be fully fledged 
or fully formed at this time. Um, so again, that may not speak to the actual amount of effort that it goes to port from one system to the other. Um, however, it, it would be helpful to have a guideline or recommendation on that sooner such that the porting process takes less time if there's less uh, to port over from one system to the next. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope that answers your question. Sure, thanks. And since since this working group is also, um, I mean, since the task force has also been closely associated with the learning material development working group, and so you may be connected to the community who are more interested in helping out on these aspects. So, in terms of gauging those interests, um, is there a possibility of getting involved with these projects where they need some push or help in case if that's required? So, um, like, how can the working group or the task force get involved and, and get those community resources needed for those for them to get that help? Because sometimes majority of the time the projects may say that they may not have enough enough resource or time. So um, even a little bit of help could take it a long way. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else in the task force. I am um, more than willing and able to to participate and put forth some time in terms of that uh, porting process. One of the things that we did with Bobby and our team was to get comfortable in terms of how does the read the doc system work? How does it populate from a GitHub page with a readme and RST files into the actual read the docs platform itself? So we did familiarize ourselves with that process um, specifically in order to uh, be of assistance if, if need be in terms of that porting process from a previous or other hosting uh, platform into read the docs. Yeah, and it wasn't our intent to create more work for any of the groups. It was more <clears throat> for the um, vacancy of information when people are trying to create documentation. There's no real starting point or um, templated way to go about it in the community, and we're trying to fill that need. So I don't think, again, these are only going to be recommendations. I don't think at any point where there's going to be um, a criteria um, for existing projects to jump backwards into documentation, but we're hoping that it's a forward moving process. Completely agree. So um, probably this is not a question. It's it's rather, a, um, I don't know, compliment or, or, or things that I liked through the presentation so far. So there were many aspects that I liked in, in this presentation. And one of the important thing that I could um, make much sense of was I think when you compare a couple of out, the, the, the non hyperledger projects with the documentation that we have within hyperledger, you called out and out some of those projects they were calling out uh, the, the text part of it, the documentation which talks about all the uh, text, the theory which has paragraphs and which requires somebody to spend a lot, lot and lot of time. And then there, within that, they had created a category called, hey, here is a quick reference guide for developers. You don't have to read through and search through all these places. Here is a quick reference if you are planning to use CLI, for instance, for administration purpose. Here is a quick reference guide for you to use SDKs to get started with the development. I think those are some of the aspects that I really liked that probably we could recommend every project that is incubating to adopt. I know some of the project that we have already does make some distinction uh, in their documentation in those aspects, but having that distinction, uh, the visual distinction that we showcased, that clearly makes sense. Probably that's definitely that we should recommend. And overall, it was a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rune. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments? I loved the kind of encyclopedic dive that that fabric goes into. So for someone who's, it's their very first hyperledger project, or it's their very first, um, you know, they're spinning up an instance to be able to get that kind of overview. Um, it, it's it's amazing. But then for a developer who may have already used one hyperledger project who now wants to integrate or incorporate that into their their tech stack or their their corporate ecosystem. Um, having that kind of uh, uh, lengthy introduction may uh, it may benefit to, for that not to be at all removed. I love it. I would not remove it. However, like as Arun is saying, it it's, might behoove us to to move those into a separate section, such that if you're a person who wants to learn about that, you have that option, um, but you're not inundated with um, quite a bit of information all all at once. So.
Anyway, uh, thanks, Tracy. Sorry, I just wanted to re reflect what uh, Arun was saying. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, so I, I guess, you know, I'll add my comments here. Um, I'm not seeing any, any other hands. So I I think I had an, an initial reaction as well, very similar to Arun's, where uh, you're asking people to do a lot of work to, to make things consistent across the projects. Right. And I, I think that's going to be a, a, a hard thing to get started. Right. A lot of the, the projects have worked a long time on their documentation and had, you know, documentation working groups and, and things that took, you know, months, if not years to, to get to the point where they're at. Um, and, and so I, you know, obviously recognizing all of the hard work that people have put into their documentation already is is extremely important. I, I do see that there would be benefit, benefit to having some sort of templates that new projects could use, right, to start their documentation um, that allows for some sort of consistency, as well as um, in addition to those templates, right, guidelines for what sort of things people should think about including, right? So, um, for example, right, the, the four kind of top level bullet items that BASU had, right? Maybe those are the four sorts of things that are the most important to, to make sure that you think through as you start writing the documentation. Um, you know, and, and if there's some sort of theme uh, that we can use with the MK docs, right? That uh, makes sense across Hyperledger. I think that's interesting. Um, Benjamin Thomas, I'm gonna just call out, you know, is there any sort of pieces that, we would want to think about with the documentation for these projects when it comes to kind of the overall um, branding, I guess is the right word, right? Uh, around Hyperledger that, that maybe could be added as far as input to the work that uh, this task force is working on. I saw you come off mute, but I cannot hear you. Hi, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Hi, sorry, thanks, Tracy. Uh, yes, we have discussed how to make sure the branding is, uh, brand guidelines are applied throughout all the projects. And we've also discussed that along the lines of uh, the um, domains that they reside on as well. Uh, ult ultimately, as long as they are all residing within the, the brand guidelines, there isn't a, a major issue um, as such. We obviously want to make sure that each project's brand is 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 utilized throughout uh, all their communications and so on and such such forth. But um, uh, yeah, I don't think there's uh, necessarily anything too much to worry about. For I mean, in terms of the larger projects, yes, uh, and I think it's probably more of a case by case basis. But if there's anything that I can help clarify uh, in the brand guidelines, let me know. Yeah, thanks, Benjamin. I, I do think, you know, um, there's obviously some good information out there around the brand guidelines, and, and we should make sure that as we come up with these recommendations, they include those pointers or references to the brand guidelines so that people are aware of them. And, and maybe they're built into these themes that we provide as defaults. Um, you know, just uh, I think those are the sorts of things that might be worth considering as you, as you continue to move forward with the, the work that you're doing, uh, Benjamin and Bobby. Sure, and happy to also, um, you know, kind of simplify them and add them to, to the wiki. Uh, I've been talking to Ryan as well about adding uh, reporting as well. So maybe that's something we can look, look into. And and again, thank every I thank everybody for giving us the time to do this. And Benjamin, you did a great job. Um, our next meeting is Monday at noon. It's on the wiki page, and we usually spend a good portion of the the hour talking about this task force. So if anybody has any questions or wants to get into more discussion, please join us then. Okay, Arno. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on what you said. I I really feel strongly that you are on the right. Uh, 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 track there when you said, okay, it's going to be hard to ask projects to just start a whole revision process just to align 
all the documentations with one another at the same time. I do believe that a lot of the, the variations we have are merely due to a lack of template to start with, right? So everybody is trying to reinvent the same thing. And of course, you're going to do things differently. And so I do think there is there would be value in having some kind of a template and a set of guidelines. I mean, by the way, I, I do want to highlight also that I thought the information that you guys brought forward is very interesting. And, and so I can see how we would benefit from using some of this input as we move forward and update the documentation, we can you know, get inspired by some of this input to improve on the documentation as we move forward. And it's, it's going to be much more gradual than just say, oh, this is what we're going to focus on because I don't think any project can, can uh, afford that at this point. But uh, so I, I do encourage you to follow up and, and have this kind of documentation available socialize it across the project so that projects kind of have this like you know yardstick to look at and say okay as we as we revise a doc let's keep an eye on this as a goal to to align with and i think that you know over time we could have a, a more consistency across the projects for the better yeah just to to, to uh to resonate with that or, or respond to that there is so um, I was chatting with with Rai about this. There is a, a Sphinx theme that's available for each and every project that's hosted on Read the Docs, and I'd say you know eighty five percent of hyperledger projects are already on Read the Docs. It is uh, perhaps a a less time consuming or taxing process to change and harmonize the theme for every single project than it would be to say ask uh, existing maintainers to refactor or restructure. Their entire pages. Um, so just as a as as a more gentler, low cost, low work solution, <laughs> it may be to take those read the docs themes, uh, select a common theme, and then implement them as opposed to asking for much work in terms of uh, restructuring. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I can just speak on the fabric side. We're actually not very happy with our theme, so we'd be happy to switch over to a more, <laughs> uh, a better and, and more consistent theme. Okay. So no, that's that's encouraged for sure. Yeah, and maybe maybe a, another piece to add. I'm wondering if it makes sense at some point to have a repo, right? That is based on uh, whatever the sort of theme and. Um, standards are that we're trying to create as a uh, sample, right? That people who are starting new projects and need to write documentation can start from, right? Pull this set of code, uh, you know, in order to create your documentation for Project X, right? Um, I, I just think that having something that is already there, right, open for anybody to use going forward is is a good idea. All right, any other comments uh, anybody has? All right, looks like no more comments, no more hands being raised. Um, Benjamin, Bobby, thank you so much for uh, the work that you've put together for presenting this to us. It's been uh, enlightening, I think, uh, for all of the TSC members and I, I hopefully We've given you some information and feedback that will help continue to drive the work that you're doing forward. Thank you for your time and please complete the quick survey. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, with that, I, you know, uh, I'll make one last call to see if anybody else has any other topics they want to discuss. So, Tracy, I was actually wondering if there is any update about the TSC revamping. I forget the official title of that. We we voted to, you know, on the proposal and it was going to be sent to the governing board. And I don't know where things stand. I don't think we have heard back from the board at this point. So yeah, I would yeah. appreciate an update because the timing of the election is coming up. And in theory, I believe we start in August to start ramping up, but so I don't know. I see right. it maybe as an answer. Thanks. Yeah, Hart does have an answer. So Hart, we'll hand it over to you. Um, hey, Arno. Yeah, that's a great question. 
So the answer is that when uh, LF Legal decided to take a uh, deeper look at our charter, they thought it needed some substantial updating. Uh, it is one of the older charters and they write uh, new charters in, in very different ways. So uh, Scott Nicholas uh, is uh, rewriting the, is, is making some not uh, substantive, but uh, well, I should say Scott is, is updating the charter in ways that won't change how Hyperledger functions, but will sort of uh, more accurately you know, reflect the legalese that we need to say, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's what's going on right now, and that's why uh, we are somewhat delayed. Uh, hopefully that will be done soon now. And, but so, and right, the, yeah. yeah, Arnold, I was just gonna say, I think, the, I think the expectation, if I'm not mistaken, and people can uh, help me if I'm wrong here, but is since we have kind of general approval, although not official approval, uh, from the TSC and the governing board that the, the election would actually be delayed until the timing that has been written into the charter, which I believe is that we do nominations in November, uh, voting uh, in November from the, uh, the maintainers and then voting in December from the governing board, which would start a new term in January. Hart, is there any change to that timeline or the expectation for when the next vote would occur? Uh, no, so we will have to, we were told that that was pro uh, probably something that we should include in a, a supplementary document rather than the charter itself. Uh, but yes, there, there, we haven't, uh, we're not expecting any substantial changes in, in how things work or, or the actual practices, just the changes in the document itself. Uh, just reflecting sort of more modern legalese, I guess. Yeah, I think, I think the question and the concern is that typically we would be having a vote for the next TSC probably starting about now, right, where we would be gathering nominations and doing all the work necessary to figure out who's going to vote and all of those sorts of things. And so I think the question is, uh, you know, is that happening on the same schedule? Is it changing to reflect uh, the fact that we want to start the new technical oversight committee uh, term in the new year, the beginning of January? I'll talk to Scott and I will uh, figure out what our timeline is for this. I'm hoping it's quite soon. I mean, I cannot speak for everybody on TSC, but I'm totally fine, you know, agreeing that we delay until all of this has been settled. Uh, but as things stand, we don't have such a decision on record and, and it puts us in a bit of a limbo. But I mean, I don't think anybody is going to take issue with it if there is, you know, agreement, this is what's happening and we're all cool with it. I just think it, it helps to to state that clearly, this is what's happening. Yeah, good point. I don't know. Uh, you know, I think that's the that's the working assumption at this point. Uh, if there is a concern, definitely let's have that conversation um, so that we know what we're uh, what we're up against, and we can see if we can get some movement and speed happening on this. Okay, any other topics? Thank you for bringing that one to the forefront, Arno. Uh, any other topics that we should discuss currently? No? Okay, so I am going to then close the meeting. Thank you all for joining. Um, I forget which task force is up next uh, for next week, but I will find out where we're at in the schedule and, and make sure that we're including that. Um, also, as I mentioned, uh, if you guys could take a look at the proposal for Soleil and see just your general thoughts on what you think, uh, that would be great. And we will talk again next week.